Hi, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and here I have the new Acer B-Touch E101. Uh, there are two models of B-Touch, the E101 and the E100. The E100 has uh, 3G and the E101 does not. The uh, E101 is the slightly cheaper model. Now Acer seem to be releasing quite a lot of handsets just lately so we're going to just take a quick look at uh, the E101, see what's inside the box and a uh, quick tour around the device before we move on to our review. So the handset itself is placed immediately on top. As you can see this is the white version. There is also a black version of the same handset available. Exactly the same spec, just different colour. Come back to it in just a few moments. So also inside the box, uh, let's open up. We have the manual, or quick guide in actual fact, which covers the basics including charging the battery and getting started. Uh, we have a screen protector. We then have the international warranty card. We have uh, a certificate and a uh, serial for uh, getting started with uh, the online synchronization. And the user manual is also on a full CD-ROM there. Underneath, a couple of compartments, which I'll just open and empty. Move the box out of the way. So first of all, we have a wired headset, which is a mini USB style connector on one end with a length of cable. Then there is what looks to be yeah, an inline microphone with just a single push button, no media controls or anything, but there is a push button uh, and a clip for clipping it onto clothing. Then there are the headphones themselves, which don't look too bad. I uh, have seen worse, I've also seen better, but that's uh, your sort of standard supplied wired headset. Um, Slightly um, disappointing that there isn't a 3.5mm headphone connector on the device or uh, that you won't be able to use uh, your own headphones easily without an adapter but uh, that is your supplied headset there. Then there is a USB to mini USB sync charge cable, a pretty standard item. A UK 3 pin plug and a mains charger which again is a mini USB style connector. Uh, strange, uh, interesting that it's mini USB, most devices are going to micro, but uh, obviously this is mini. We then have the battery, and the battery is 1140 milliamp hours, so not too bad. So let's take a look at the handset itself. So on the front we have a 3.2 inch display, which uh, is reasonably large in fact. Um, the handset itself is quite slender, uh, and sort of, you know, narrow, and longer than perhaps your average handset. Uh, that's a 3.2 inch diagonal display which is WQVGA which is 240 by 400 pixels resistive touch screen as is fairly typical of Windows Mobile handset this being Windows Mobile 6.5 there are a series of keys underneath which are actually physical they look like they're going to be touch, touch sensitive but there are physical push buttons with tactile feedback so you have your home and back buttons uh, and your phone keys on either side there there is a D-pad up, down, left and right with a push button in the centre uh, which is not a bad little design. The whole thing is pretty flat on the front, which is quite cool. There is a screen protector still sitting on there at the moment, which I'm going to leave in place. On the left-hand side is an up and down volume control rocker and a little switch. Uh, pro presumably that locks the uh, actual screen, but uh, exact function, I'm not 100% sure at the moment. Then there is the mini USB style connector there, which uh, obviously is for sync and charge and obviously pl also for plugging in the supplied wired headset. On the bottom, nothing really to see. There is just a hole there for the microphone. And up on the right hand side, we have the dedicated camera button and a cover over a micro SD card slot. On the top, just the power button and also space for a stylus, which is extremely small and uh, isn't telescopic. Um, I guess most people tend not to use the stylus these days and get by by using their fingers or their fingernails. Just peel the back cover off. Well, on the back we have a 2 megapixel fixed focus camera, which may not sound like a lot, but um, don't forget this is a fairly entry level handset. And we'll just pull the back off. Uh, this is where our SIM card goes. And the battery just obviously pops in place there like so. And the back cover just slides back on, like so. Fairly easy to get the cover on and off, and we'll just power up. While I'm doing that, let me just run down the rest of the specification. As I say, this is a Windows Mobile 6.5 handset. We have a Qualcomm processor running at 528 megahertz, 
have 512 meg of ROM and 256 meg of RAM, which isn't particularly bad. 3.2 inch display, I've already mentioned, which is WQVGA. It is quad band for GSM, so in terms of voice calling, it will work pretty much wherever you're going to take it. But as I say, the E101 that I have here isn't, uh, isn't 3G, so you are limited to GSM, GPRS and Edge for data connectivity. The E100 model does have uh, 3G. But uh, don't don't perhaps be put off uh, by that because uh, don't forget this is an entry level handset. So we do only have the two megapixel camera, and yes, uh, we do only have uh, we don't have 3G. But uh, it is a handset that will cost around only 150 pounds. So it is uh, probably sort of a bargain entry level handset. So if we just uh, go through the initial setup, line the screen. Hopefully that should be the last time we actually need the stylus and we'll just set this all up and we'll skip that and skip the email setup so that's just complete and that's just going to run the custom installation there where it installs things like connection wizard there and all the, any Asus specific software it does have built in GPS which is pretty good and it's an assisted GPS chipset so you can use the device for sat nav which is, uh, is pretty reasonable. Standby time is listed at 400 hours and talk time at 5 hours. Dimensions 113 millimeters from top to bottom, 56 millimeters wide and just under 13 millimeters thick. Uh, it is quite lightweight as well, only 118 grams. I think it's a nice small handset easily pocketable. Personally I do quite like the white, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but uh, for those that don't like the white you can get it in black um, but I, do, I think the white is quite smart uh, possibly perhaps it would uh, it would mark over time but I'm actually quite uh, quite happy with the white. We'll just wait for this to finish installing all the Acer custom components and we'll just have a very quick look at the OS. Okay so I actually did stop and restart the recording here because the initial setup uh, has taken around seven or eight minutes, which uh, only needs to happen the first time you actually uh, reset the device after a hard reset. So it uh, doesn't take seven or eight minutes to reboot every time. So just bear that in mind. Um, so we do have um, a more, more unusual arrangement of icons on desktop. Uh, it's kind of like a desktop arrangement. So you have phone, text, phone book, Internet Explorer, Windows Media, and Messenger on the main page there, if you like, or the home screen. Uh, we do have in the start menu the other applications uh, as you can see there they are arranged in the honeycomb style as is pre pretty typical of a Windows Mobile 6.5 device. A couple of icons in here that we won't have seen before probably is a social networking icon. There's also a multimedia which is pretty straightforward. MSM weather is in there. Uh, task manager, active sync, Facebook already installed which is quite cool and a YouTube application. Google Maps also pre-installed and also Acer registration so you can obviously register the products presumably online. Um, so there, there are a few items on here that are perhaps out of the ordinary. MSN money is also there, uh, MSN messenger, all the things that you, you know, pretty, come to, pretty much come to expect. Internet Explorer is there, I don't see Opera, um, so uh, Internet Explorer is the only browser that's pre-installed as you can see there. But that's what we find in the start menu. So we can press the, and go into the start menu by pressing the button in, button in the corner and then closing it the other side. Uh, also going to the start menu by pushing the button there at the bottom. And oh, so we have to close that back out of the side. We can lock there the side and it actually locks the screen. And then we have to just slide to unlock, pretty, pretty typical. And also on this side we have the settings button. And we can change the uh, items that we have on, on the home screen. So uh, we can't remove phone text and phone book, but we can remove and replace Internet Explorer, Windows Media and Messenger. And we can also add another three underneath. So that's quite cool. So we can customize that. It doesn't appear that we can actually swipe that backwards and forwards. There is only like the one page. At the top, we have a task manager. I'll just press to go into that. Task manager there, as you can see. So in the status notification area, we can tap there and we can actually get to the settings there. We can change the ring volume and so on. And that's a really standard Windows Mobile um, uh, item there that's floating over the top there. Um, it hasn't been skinned at all, uh, which is uh, unusual. Most uh, most manufacturers are skinning things like the volume controls and stuff like that. Um, but that's what we find in the status area and in the comm manager. So these like notifications are, um, are very much Windows Mobile 6.5 standard items. Uh, pressing the buttons at the bottom, well that's, uh, that's the home screen, the back button, and then we have the phone dialer, 
and uh, we can obviously dial numbers quite happily, that's no problem. Don't forget it is a resistive touch screen, so it does require like a re you know a harder press than a capacitive screen. So you need to press it with something like a fingernail or reasonably hard with the middle of your finger. I mean it is quite a sensitive screen, it's not too bad at all. Um, it's reasonably impressive. It's quite quite clear and bright. Obviously, um, there is quite a bit of reflection on this screen. Obviously, I'm in some a very bright environment, but it gives you an idea of what sort of uh, glare and reflection you would expect uh, from the handset when you're actually using it anyway. So they give you an idea of, of what to expect when you're using the handset outside. So we'll just come back out of there. And final look just in the start menu. And we'll go to social networking to see if we've got some idea of what that actually entails. Oh, and so here we can connect to Blogger, Flickr, YouTube and Facebook, uh, whether or not there's any other applications that we could uh, add to that list, perhaps there are, but uh, those are the four that are listed there. Uh, we'll try those out at some point also. So that is a very quick tour of the Acer E101. Say the Acer E100 is much the same device, but also has 3G connectivity where this one does not. This one is uh, considered a fairly entry-level Windows Mobile 6.5 handset. So if uh, you're fairly new to Windows Mobile 6.5, uh, or you just want a reasonably straightforward phone uh, to have Windows Mobile 6.5, this could be a good entry level handset for you. It's £150 plus VAT, which is a very, very good price for a Windows Mobile 6.5 handset, so it's definitely worth considering. We'll have a full review for you on tracyandmat.co.uk over the next couple of weeks. And don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter. On Twitter, we are Tracy and Matt. And also Facebook, we have a Facebook fan page. The details of those can be found uh, if you missed any of those URLs. That can be found on the title page of the video, so you can just follow our URLs there. So don't forget to follow us on Twitter and come back for a review on tracyandmat.co.uk, and we'll see you again soon in another unboxing video.